Hi, everyone. Um, I'm very happy to be here with you all. Um, and this is my talk. Uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, how we forgot about all these database credentials and we make our compliance team much more happy. Uh, in a highly regulated uh, environment, uh, any financial startup or company, uh, this is a very, very important uh, key uh, element. And, you know, we have less management and compliance team is happier, so we all win. Uh, my name is Carlos. Uh, and these are my handlers for Twitter and GitHub. I'm a senior DevOps on, at, at uh, Oak North. And let's go. So first of all, trust no one. Uh, let's reduce the trust, the trust chains and only have, you know, talking machines. Um, in the old ways, uh, oh, how I, things started, at least for me, we used to have a database that someone on systems provisioned. We used to have uh, our running applications and someone created these databases, these credentials and gave them to us. We put them into a file and we make that uh, available for the application. Well, that's not secure. So we will add a Kubernetes secret, which is uh, encoded, not really, but um, a little bit more secure uh, way of provisioning these values to our application. Still not very good. Um, <clears throat> let's put it on a credential manager somewhere else uh, and make it much more secure. We only have that secret at runtime for the application. It's not living on the Kubernetes cluster. So anyone getting into that cluster could reach those out. Um, but then let's see how that, what this means, all this workflow, someone creating the secret, provisioning into the database, putting into somewhere, uh, and then making that available for the application, what that means. Well, that means that all these trust relationships we have created, all these dependencies, all these attack surface we have put in place, uh, willingly or not willing, um, it just makes so much difficult to to make compliance, to be able to create uh, some sort of standard or contracts for clients and to make sure that they are happy with the, our security standards. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so all this means that you have to secure the place where you create the, the password, this computer, and you also have to secure uh, the path of how you provision that into the database, how you provision that into this uh, secret manager or file or how, however you want to, to provision this. And you also have to, uh, to secure your application, how it's running. Um, any attacker could take over of any of these points, uh, access level to this security, uh, password, cloud, uh, store, or anything like this. <clears throat> so in, in my career, I, I have been seeing this many, many times and re making really, really hard the relationship between compliance and developers and DevOps or, or sysadmins. So with with Vault, we, we got this, uh, in direction where the database credentials live from vault, in Vault. But on top of that, they are dynamic. So no one knows them. No one knows them, which means it, that is great. Um, on top of that, we reduce the attack surface by making Vault to own the root password. So no one actually knows what password is being managed. What we're doing here is, is actually reducing the, the attack surface and all the points uh, where an attacker could potentially uh, take over of the of database credentials and obviously make a lot of damage on on, uh, on a company where financial 
uh, regulated companies are even more strictly uh, regulated and fined if, uh, if data is leaked. Um, so after that, after that root password has been rotated, the only two attack surface points will be actually Vault if they take over Vault and, and the, the application itself. Everything goes into runtime, everything is, uh, it is very secure. Um, but on top of that, uh, everything is dynamic. So at any given point, you might get that, but if you try again, it would not work. Um, and that is great. That is great because you can tell your compliance team, look, there is no way, no way, thanks to this architecture, that uh, anyone will be ever able to, to gather uh, access to our databases. Um, what happens if they do? <laughs> uh, so security breach detected, we've been hacked, right? Um, how do you, <clears throat> sorry, how do we uh, know if we have been detected or uh, hacked or not? Uh, this, this comes up to different instrumentations, different ways of, of knowing. Uh, one of them could be just an alert. Um, there's a very nice project out there called Falco for Kubernetes that gives you this capability. Um, <clears throat> So what happens if you, you detect this hack because the capability of alerting doesn't mean that the way you provision your, that your passwords is different. Um, okay, so you have to review first, where did this hacker got these credentials from? And where is this, uh, this hacker attacking? Uh, let's say that we have a pipeline that is provisioning these credentials uh, automatically. Um, it means that maybe we are printing those credentials and not uh, on the output of, of this pipeline, which means that anyone could go there, copy paste, and there you go, you're hacked. So the first thing is review where this attack happened and address that and then renew all the secrets because you have to. So all that manual work that happened once, now you have to do it again. Uh, with the inconvenience that you might not remember, you might not know, you, you might be a completely different team from the original team that created all this uh, credentials, set of credentials for your application. And obviously you, you have to run your application. The downtime for this could be huge and very, very inconvenient for, for uh, 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 any organization. Uh, but I'm imagining, for example, if, if your organization is especially sensitive to, to time and uh, money comes to play, uh, let's say a stock market, something like that, uh, it could be very damaging for you as a company and for your clients. So it is not great. Um, so thanks to Vault and these dynamic credentials, the only step you have to do here is, well, First, to identify if you have been uh, taken over through Vault or your application. <clears throat> uh, the Vault path, it is very, very hard to, to get taken over. Uh, obviously, we can't, things, we can't do things wrong, but Vault uh, policies uh, are very well fine-grained access and thanks to this method that I'm highlighting slightly here, uh, using the Kubernetes authentication method for Vault, it means that Vault is gonna ask uh, the Kubernetes cluster if whoever is requesting this, these credentials uh, is, is running inside of this cluster. So it is really, really hard for anyone to gather these, these credentials outside of the cluster. So let's assume that is actually the pod. What do we do to um, just neutralize this attack? We just restart the pods. Start the pods, all these credentials will get lost and the new set of pods will get a new set of credentials, which is great. Um, how do we even go a little bit farther and let's reassure ourselves that we are not being uh, too, oh, not enough cautious on, on this. Uh, 
first of all, to provision this to uh, commands where we will revoke all the credentials given to any client and will force to rotate the, uh, the root password once again, which means that in any case, this will make almost impossible for any attacker to, to gain access to, to your database. Um, so how all this get created? How do we configure all this, right? I'm a DevOps engineer, so I love infrastructure as code, and Terraform is great for this. Um, thankfully, uh, HashiCorp provides a, a Terraform uh, provider for Vault, which means that we can configure Vault through Terraform. How does this look like roughly? Um, this is not a technical, a technical uh, talk. Uh, this is just highlighting that we have this. I have done it, but every single scenario changes much. Uh, so I can do two technical uh, indications on this. But roughly how it looks like is you create a database. Uh, you give it a, a set of uh, root password for, for the database. You put that away in a very, very secure way, thanks to hashing, and uh, thanks to the sensitive uh, indications or parameters on uh, Terraform. And, and then you create a new super user for Vault to be able to manage the database. You do not want to lose the root password forever. Although it's very cool, uh, there will be always uh, situations where you mine it for something. Uh, so put that away, make sure that no one can read it uh, through other policies, and then let, let, uh, let's create another, another role for, for Vault and let it to change it over and over and over. Again, um, this is how roughly looks like you create a, a backend, uh, you create some, some database connection. You can see that the original password is provided here to this connection string. And thanks to these uh, templating capabilities that uh, Vault and Terraform have, uh, and that root rotation statements, it will just change them on the flight. Um, and that is the, the most powerful capability of Vault. It, it's the only one that knows uh, a usable uh, root password. And then you create the role for your application. Uh, you define some default TTLs, some max TTLs. Uh, this is very, very powerful. And it means that the, every time that a secret, a set of credentials is leased to uh, your application, it will have, well, as much as you want. Um, I normally set it to one hour. So the default time to leave for, for the original secret is one hour, but it can be extended up to for how much you, you want to, to take, let's say the risk, uh, 24 hours, and then you need to, to, to get a, a new set of credentials. Uh, that could mean for your application that you need to restart it or not, depends on your application actually. Uh, but those two parameters are, that's the meaning. You get an original TTL that can be extended as many times as the max TTL allows you. Um, so let's go one step farther. Uh, this is great. Um, Vault is great. I love it. Uh, there is a bunch of libraries that you can use to, to plug it to your applications and make your applications Vault aware. Um, most of them take care of this leasing and um, authentication. But what you can also do is use uh, HashiCorp console templates to even improve it this further. Uh, there is one project. Uh, so this is uh, how uh, a console template looks like. Uh, you can access Vault thanks to this secret uh, key key uh, keyword, and then you can access the data inside of this uh, this secret to template a file that will be put somewhere into your application pod container, 
uh, that can be accessed. Um, sometimes we do not have access to, to alterate this container. Sometimes we cannot add a library. And I love this project, especially Vault Agent. Uh, it's just awesome. Uh, it is just a way of abstracting your application from Vault, which means that uh, there is an intrinsic benefit of using this, which is uh, locally people can run, still can run their applications without contacting Vault. It means that they can set the same file as Vault Engine will render for them in a testing way and test against their local database or something like that. Um, and also, it gives you this capability that when you don't have the options to add a library, you can just uh, securely provision these, these paths, these secrets to any application. Um, it integrates with Vault. It integrates with uh, uh, Kubernetes. Using just uh, Kubernetes annotations, you can give them templates, paths, roles, uh, many, many other things. Uh, it is literally with this uh, console templates. If it gives you the, also the option to contact not only Vault but also uh, um, console itself, right? Uh, console templates are a superset of uh, of Go templating, which means that give you access to Vault and console. It gives you power to discover services through console uh, service discovery. Uh, it gives you power to template things based on these service discovered services. And it will renew this this file if you instruct it to do so. Um, it is extremely powerful and very fun to play with. Uh, I will recommend it. And after all this, uh, my point to take is we have given our compliance team, our security team, uh, no reason to distrust us. Uh, we have given them uh, a way, uh, a, a template to know for them that if we ever get hacked, if anyone ever try to get access to our databases, uh, they are gonna be literally not very successful trying to achieve this. It is really hard. It's really, really almost impossible. And uh, everyone will be happy. Our clients will be happy. It will be so much easier for our, uh, our sales team to make sure that the clients are very comfortable uh, using our, our systems. And that's it. Um, there's a bunch of references I will include, I have included on these uh, slides. And thank you.